to this week's episode of Original Plan, your weekly program of faith and marriage where we invite people to share their faith and marriage experience with us for others to learn. Our guest for today is Evangelist Mojisala Ogulano, the producer of more than 50,000 movies. Mojisala Ogulano studied at Yaba College where she had her OND in Electrical Electronics Engineering in the year 1990, from where she proceeded to Unilab where she obtained a diploma in data processing. She attended Mount Zion Institute of Christian Drama in 1994, where she had an ordinary certificate in Christian movie. She has been into drama since 1988, performing on state production in her church and other churches' ministration, going from state to state under the Christ Image Assembly. Miss Mojisola Ogulano got married to Rua Femi Ogulano in the year 1999 and God has blessed them with wonderful three children. Evangelist Mojisola Ogulano is the president of His Kids Production and the producer of One in 50,000 movie, which is a true life story of her daughter Ifo Luwa Loshe and she's a popular transformation ranter known as Ayoka and Murder. Join me as I welcome you. Yeah, you welcome to this uh, program, Original Plan. Ezekiel Luafemi is my name. Like I used to say, I'll be the conductor of this program today also, and God will be the driver. And today, I have someone special here in the house, and her name is Mrs. Mojisola Ogulana. You welcome, ma. Thank you, my uh, brother. <laughs> thank you, ma. So today, we, are, we, we, we have a lot of questions that we want to ask you. So we'll be asking you a lot of questions, but before we ask, ma, uh, people know you, Many people do know you, but we want to ask from you. Maybe what we have been seeing, hearing from you about you is, is true or not true. So can you please, uh, within some seconds, tell us about yourself. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my name is Mrs. Mojisola Ogulano. I'm married with three children, two wonderful girls and a boy. I am the president of his skills production. I'm a drama minister and a producer. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you very much, Ma. I said I'll be asking you many questions today. The first thing I will ask you, Ma, I want you to ask your own understanding of faith. What do you understand by the word called faith, Ma? Faith. It's like God. You know, if you want to look at it critically from Hebrew 11, the Bible says faith is an evidence of things you hope for. You understand? But I want to take it beyond that. I see faith as in taking a risk as God was. Whatsoever thing God says, whether you believe it or not, whether it's true or lie, whether it is reality or it has been heard of, you just take God for who he is. This morning I was I was reading something in my Bible and I came across some things and I said, God, why? What made this woman to trust you so much? You said it is the Holy Spirit that breaks up her now. I'm talking about Mary. Mm. And she believed. Mm. She never doubted. She never planned that I want to go and commit abortion. What? And God said, it's just because she knows who I am. So I'm seeing faith as in just taking God for who he is. Mm. Mm. That, that, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. But uh, to, be, to be realistic, so in, in a science world, they say, seeing is believing. And what's in a, in a dictionary, in God's dictionary now, is like believing and at the end you will see. So what can you say to people that always, there's nothing you can say to some people. They don't believe that help, um, faith, I mean, I mean, you have faith and you get it. So what can you say to that someone? You know one thing, the Bible talks about that, the word, the Bible, is foolishness unto them that are perishing. Mm -hmm. You see, faith in itself is God. God is faith. So you cannot expect someone that does not know God or believe in God to take his word. Faith is God. God is faith. So because they don't know God, so they cannot take him for who he is. If I don't know you now, no matter what you are telling me, I can't trust you. I want to see what you've done before. If you tell me that you are a magician, for example, and because I don't know you, I will not take you for you. I will think, oh, I want for one and here. Or today, but it's because of maybe if I know you, no matter what you are going to say, I will trust you. So the reason why people outside there don't take God for His word and for taking and believing in God is because they don't know God, and because we are all human. 
so they want to see it. Show me your proof. Even the Bible said that faith without works is dead. So I want to see your works, then I'll say you have faith. But it's more deeper. It's more deeper. May God will help us. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Uh, the next question is, when was the first time you applied faith in your life? And how was the experience? Okay, that was 1988. You know, I, I came from a Muslim family. That was when I had, I wanted to gain admission to the higher institution. You know, when you're talking about having a good grade, I had a very good grade, even A2 in English, A3 in mathematics, like I happened to be a science student. So by then, they normally put results inside the system. So it's the system that was going to pick good grade and admit. So I was so full of my result that, oh. Then I've given my life to God. Even a brother told me that, Stan, would you have with your admission? Have you told yourself, this one is too small for God to interfere. So I was so confident of my result, you know, too full of myself. The first batch. My name did not come out. Second batch, my name did not come out. I was like wondering what happened. Even it amazes the registrar then it was like, ah, ah. when they realized that my name didn't come out the first one, they he himself put my name there. But one way or the other, by the time the list will come out, my name disappeared. So when it got to the toss batch, I was like, what's going on? Okay, let me go to the class self and go and check. Maybe it's A1 parallel people that the school admitted. But to my amazement on getting there, either there. The school admitted people with CCs CC down. I was like, what is going on? So that brother said, no, I'm telling you. You have to go to God. So like a prodigal son, I came back to my senses and I went to God. So when I got to God, I cried. I begged God. And lo and behold, God spoke. And God said, don't worry. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I see one thing is that I heard God. And that is the thing that I want to point out. When you are in a situation and are in a problem, the first thing you should do is to hear God, which is the voice. No matter what other people are saying, is a noise. And when you give your ear to too much noise, you're going to get yourself, your ear damaged. So I heard the voice of God that said, don't worry, I will do what I've, they've never done before in the school. So with that one, one kind of a faith just bubbled up from inside of me. I, I was telling people up and down that I've been admitted into school. I got myself in the class, was listening to lectures. I, I paid for the matriculation gown. Remember, the school has not admitted me, but because God has said it. Now I told you that faith is taking risks as God word. No matter how the sounds, you hold God onto his word. So I went there. So in the morning of matriculation day, lo and behold, the admission list came out. And my name was there. So that one really, wow. well, I said, wow, this is God. So what I just need is to hold on to God and follow him, what he says. And that one really, like, caused a holy, holy hunger, a holy faith inside of me. So ever since, whenever I find myself in any critical situation, I always want to rush to God, pray God, oh, yeah, Alpha, what are you saying? <laughs> so once I hear what God is saying, huh? every other thing is okay. Wow, that's wonderful. As in, this, 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 this story is, like the one I had somewhere, I mean, evangelist, everybody, the one he was hearing his uh, faith experience, he said, the admission is not yet come, but he has already packed his load that he's going. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's almost the same thing. Thank you very much. Like, uh, I, I picked something there. Uh, I think I picked something he said that when you heard from God, is a voice. Other people speak in. It's noise. Too and when you give your head to too much of noise, mm. you will get yourself deaf. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you, Ma. Thank you very much, Ma. Ma, can you please tell us your experience with your faith, your faith experience? I can. Somebody saw me one day and said, maybe I should change my name to Madam Faith. Or I should call my daughter Faith. So they will be calling me Mommy Faith. I was like, why? He said, because all my life is just an embodiment of faith. Because of that, you know one thing about God, my brother? Because God knew where he's taking us to. There are some things that you are passing through now. It's not for now. It's the journey of the future. But God is planning you ahead of what you're going to pass through in the future. So because of that 88 experience, you know, I just said that it's one of those things. But something now happened when I wanted to marry. 
You know, I told you I came from a Muslim family. Yes. So my father's family said, they are not stopping me not to go to church. Then you have to do Nikai on Friday, Muslim wedding on Friday. Then on Saturday, they can follow me to church. But I know it's not done. How come? I'll do Muslim wedding Friday. Saturday, I'll go to church. No, 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 I can't do it. So I stood my ground. They told me they will not sponsor my wedding. I said, hey, no baton. So they did not do anything. None of my father's family didn't show up. They didn't come on my wedding day. Even my father, he came when I was about to enter the church with somebody else. I've already told somebody else to be my father. He said they will not come. I said, no problem. So when that person was about taking me inside, he came. So it was the only one that showed up on my wedding day. Because of what? I was taking God's word. Mm. No, it was really a risk. You know, it, was, it wasn't easy. It was tough. You know, none of your father's family came for your wedding. They didn't sponsor your wedding. You have to struggle to do so many things. But I stood by God's word. You know what happened to shock you? Some years after, 80% of them, they have not given their life to God. Wow. So I cannot imagine. Let's say I've danced to their tune then. Maybe they will be blaming you. Hey, it is you that I don't know who you believe initially. Mm -hmm. So taking faith is, is, is risky and it's not palatable. Now that's another level of faith. So now God says, okay, you've passed this one. I'm taking you to a higher level of faith. Now I'm married. And I had my first baby. Hey, now came with a syndrome called Trishakoli syndrome. It's a syndrome that happened to a child out of 50,000 children. And does not have a cure. You can only manage with different kind of operations. So I was told that I should not give her pepperish thing until she's 18. She will not be able to hear. So therefore, I'll go to deaf school to learn sign language. She could, she can, she could not suck then. She was lactose intolerant. She did not take breast milk. And they said so many things. Anything you put in her mouth will come out of her nose. And does not have a cure. A first child. I brought such a child home. But because I've learned to always hear from God, which is the thing that we must always learn to do, wherever you find yourself in any situation, just hear what God is saying. And went to God that God, this is another issue. What are you saying? And God said, Comfort you receive, comfort another person. I said, Ah, Baba God. In this scenario now, show me one single comfort. Is it the comfort that you are going to deaf school? Comfort that your child could not suck and is lactose intolerant? Comfort that she will not be able to walk? Which, where is the comfort? God said, okay, you need an answer, then you to answer this question. What is OCR offense that I told him to go and marry an adult just because I want to speak love to people? I could not answer because I did not know what OCR did to God. God now said, okay, how about Mary, a young virgin that God impregnated before marriage, that she, I think, is easy, the embarrassment, the insult. Mm -hmm. I could not answer. And God now said, that's the thing. So I cried, and God said, my grace is sufficient for you. So it has been the, that faith that I've been trusting God with, and to the glory of the Lord now, that child now, by next week, She's sitting for her post jam in the university. Hallelujah. She had a good result in our egg. She walked before she was one. She had pepperish food when she was four months old against 18 years old. She yes very well without hearing it. And God has been so wonderful. Just because I held on to God, I trusted God for his word. And God, what God just needs is for you to just put your hand in his hand and walk along with him. Though it's not easy. If I say it's easy, it's not. But all the while, through it all, I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend upon his word. Ma, it, 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 was there any day, maybe there was a time you are believing God for something, and you have faith, you have, you believe that God will do it, but later you got a different answer. Yes, when the issue of my baby came, I quickly link up with people that I know have challenges. So I got to meet Nick Vicky, the guy without limbs. So I read one of his books that said, he was saying there, he quotes, that there was a day he went to go and buy trousers, believing God that he's going to have leg. So I had, I had on to that. So there came a time my daughter wanted to go and do a procedure. They wanted to work on her hair. So I had the faith in me 
that ah we're coming back to Nigeria with fine hair because one of the features is that they will know they will have problem with hair. So I've even bought her a ring that she's going to put on. So when we go to South Africa, so the surgeon said, see you in five hours time. I came down. So lo and behold, one hour later I saw this soldier, I was like, maybe something negative will happen. So the man said, ah, there is an issue. I said, what happened? He said, as they were cleaning up the hair, that the hair was infected. So I wondered that they've cleaned up the entire hair, that she had no hair again. I was like, <laughs> no God, I believe you for a brand new hair. They are not telling me that a whole hair is off. How will I open my mouth and tell this girl that you don't have hair again? Hey, how will I even call back home? There are no hair. I was not praying that God is like shattered dream. That was the meaning of this one. So that particular day, they brought in a child to the world. My daughter was outside. I was inside the hospital. So she just ran inside. I saw the thing. So I now wanted to use that opportunity to talk to her. That's how she, you see that one, your one is even better. She said, oh, mommy, you are telling me. Is it because I don't have hair again? I was shocked that how did she got to know that she don't? Said that. I went to the toilet. I opened the bandage and I said, mommy, don't worry, Jare. See, when I get back to Nigeria, I'll pack my hair up. She was even the one con consoling me and mm -hmm. I was like, God, this is you. And to shock you, that side that I said no hair, she even hear me than the one that is just big there. So mm. God used that incident, that though it did not work the, the way I wanted it. You know, so many times we always want God to say yes, when we pray. But even when God said no, it's an answer. It doesn't mean that God did not hear. He heard and he answered. Even when God said wait, he heard and he answered. So is that three things? Yes, no wait. So when God is saying no, he knows that at that particular time, you don't need that thing. And when he's saying wait, he knows that it's not yet time. You will still blow on. It's not yet time. Ah, ah, he would that will come, will come, he will not tell, he will still get there. Wait. But so many times we always want to hear yes. So at that particular time, I wanted a year to put hearing, but God said, No, I will not take glory like this. I will take glory when there is no hear and she can hear. How will listen? No hear and somebody can hear. No, that one will bring more glory. So it that takes me to that story. When they met that guy that have no eyes, that is blind, they said, Who we'll sing? The parents or the boy? Jesus Christ said, No. For my glory to come to pass. So it's that one will bring glory. Without here and she here. That one will bring glory that despite all, this girl still look beautiful. No, check it out. Which one will give me glory? And I said, God. So my faith was strengthened, though it wasn't as I wanted. But my what God gave me strengthened my faith the more and brought more glory. So God will always do something that will bring him glory, not you. Mm. Huh? Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Um, but I will be going for a commercial break. In the next few minutes, we'll be coming back. When we come back, we have a lot of questions to still ask you. Uh, let's go for a commercial break. Lord Jesus, what have I done to deserve this from you? Your baby is very prone to infections because of her closed mouth. In the course of cleaning the infection, her ear was wiped off. So what are we going to do? As a matter of fact, it occurs in uh, about uh, only one out of 50,000 people.
you welcome back. Uh, we are still on this uh, our dining program original plan, and still here with me is Mrs. Mojisola Ogunana. Ma, we know that God has done a lot of things for you, but out of what God has done for you, we want you to share with us three things that God did for you. That you yourself, you know that you don't qualify by status, by education, by everything. You know that you are not qualified for this thing. But God did it by His grace. But one thing is my salvation. You know, I told you I came from a Muslim family. You see, I am not taking it for granted. It's a thing that I know I don't qualify for. Fine! The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He died for everybody. But for me specifically, I see it as a privilege for me and my maker to be a co-laborer. You know he created me and now we're in the same assignment together working. He said after he has reconciled us, he gave unto us ministry of reconciliation. That is to say, we are working together in the same field. So I see it as a privilege. I see that as something that I don't deserve, that I don't want it. That's number one. Number two, this is my daughter, Ifeolu Aloshe. You see, we don't qualify, especially me. I see it as a privilege for her to pass through my womb. Because from that time to now, she was 19 this year. All the money that we spend, each of our trip is over a million. And if I should calculate how much is our home from that time, from that to now, it's not up to 100,000. Oh. Even the first one she did in Nigeria was 300,000. Our cover is not there. So financially, we are not the person that's supposed to give back to such a child. But because God just said that, I want to... I want to showcase these people. Because I used to tell people that maybe without her, I wouldn't have traveled out. Mm. And I wouldn't have met, when I'm talking about meeting people, her case has made me to meet people, I've met people in life. Maybe without her, I wouldn't have achieved that which I've achieved. And her case has even strengthened my faith in God. So I see it as a privilege, what I don't deserve, what I don't want. And thirdly, oh my God, my husband. Sincerely, I don't deserve him. because. You know some people are there, they, they have challenged children and their husband sometimes will leave home, beat them, they will have poisoned the child. But this man stood by me and stood with us. Throughout all, he stood by us. So I want to see it as a privilege that I don't deserve him, but it's just a gift to me. So I want to thank him. He's a great man. Mm, thank you very much. Thank you, ma. Uh, that's... Uh... Uh, will be the end of the show. Before we go, I want you to advise people as well, you know, these days we heard news here and there, people committing suicide, people are depressed, different kind of news. We want you, I mean, we want you to advise people at home who are going into different challenges. What can you tell them so that it will increase their faith, it will help them in their Okay. Yes, my people out there, I know it's not easy. If I should say it's easy, it's a lie. It's not easy for one to be passing through so many problems. Especially doctors must have told you that you can't carry baby, your womb is destroyed, your fallopian tube is bad, generational cause, you can't make it in life. They have said so many series of things, negative things about you. But the first thing I will tell you is that hold on to God, know God. As men that know their God, the Bible says they shall be strong and they shall do expert. Hold on to God. Take him for his work. And secondly, you see, you need to hear what he's saying. When you hear the truth, it's the truth that will set you free. Hear the voice of God on that matter. Every other thing is noise. And you see, it is when you put your head on his shoulder. He said, come unto me, all that are weary and of every lady. Exchange that body with his yoke. Exchange his yoke is easy, is light. And I'm telling you, don't believe anybody. You yourself can disappoint yourself. No matter what people are saying, trust in God, hold on to him. You may not know how, you don't know when, but God will do it again. Stay closer to him. He's the ever-present in his time of need. And he's a, he's a friend that stays closer than a brother. Hold on to God. And I tell you, your faith in him will never let you down. Though it might not work the way you want it, but it's going the way God wants it. And the way God wants it is the best. God bless you. And God will strengthen and uphold you. The Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, ma. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, everyone, we really appreciate you for joining us in this program. It's been a wonderful hearing from people's experience, learning from other people who have used faith in their areas of life. And uh, it's really worked for them by the grace of God. So thank you. And I really appreciate you for joining us in this program again. And I hope I'll be seeing you next week. Next week might be on marriage. We'll be sharing with you 
people who have youth, I mean, who have experienced in marriage, who have built a family, a happy home through God. Thank you very much. And we'll be expecting you next week. Can you please do something for me? There are a lot of people that need this message. Can you please share with them? Share with your friends. And if you have a question, you can drop it down on the comment box below. Even our guests will be available to answer any of your questions and reply you. Thank you very much. See it's you next week. Us without Jesus. We're nothing without him. Just emptiness. Now stop. Think about it. Been around the world, been around the world and back Progress, there is no success without Jesus We're nothing without Him Just emptiness, now stop, think about it Just been around the world, been around the world and back Progress, there is no success